Then the second part of the hadith said, وَإِنَّمَا لِكُلِّ مْرِئٍ مَا نَوَاهِ And every person gets that which he intended. Now some of you may think that this second sentence is actually saying the, what the first sentence has said. إِنَّمَا لَعْمَانِ بِالْنِيَةِ And then again, وَإِنَّمَا لِكُلِّ مْرِئٍ مَا نَوَاهِ That's a shame. It repeated the same thing. Some scholars actually took that view and they said, إِنَّمَا لَعْمَانِ بِالْنِيَةِ And وَإِنَّمَا لِكُلِّ مْرِئٍ مَا نَوَاهِ is a tawqeed emphasis of exactly what was mentioned before. And that's the view Imam Al-Qurtubi rahimahullah, he took. He said that. He said that the, that the second sentence, uh, that it's a mu'akidah, it's an uh, emphasis for the first, which is innamal amalu bin niyat. That is one view. The second view of scholars, they said no. The second view of scholars said no. That, that, وَإِنَّمَا لِكُلِّ مْرِئٍ مَا نَوَى is actually a ta'sis and not a ta'kid. Meaning it is generating and it's bringing a new meaning that the previous sentence hasn't brought. Something new. It's a different meaning to the previous one. Then they argued amongst themselves what is the new meaning that it's introduced. And many views came regarding this. And inshallah we're just going to mention one due to the time and we're going to move on. The, or even mention two inshallah. Some said that وَإِنَّمَا لِكُلِّ مْرِئٍ مَا نَوَى means that the person specifies particularly what particular action he is doing. He specifies it and narrows it down. So it is تَعْيِينُ manwi. The thing in which he is intending, he narrows it down and he mentions it. He narrows it down. So if he's praying dhuhr, he has to narrow it down and say the salah I'm praying is dhuhr. That's the intention he has to come with. Are you with me? And sex, next, uh, next group of pe- uh, people said, the second group of people said, no. وَإِنَّمَا لِكُلِّ مْرِئٍ مَا نَوَى is saying that no one can come with the intention for other people. The first part is saying that everyone comes, that every action requires intention. And the second sentence is saying, and everybody has to intend for himself. No one can intend it for you. No one can take that <coughs> place of intending for you. When the niyyah is spoken about, brothers, eh, the niyyah is spoken about, the scholars are of two types regarding it. The niyyah is two types. The first one is, the first type is divided into two. The first type is divided into two. Which is to distinguish a ibadah from another ibadah. For example, you pray as you pray fajr. Before fajr, how many rak'ah do you pray? You pray two rak'ah. How do you distinguish between the two rak'ah before fajr and the fajr itself? How do you distinguish between it? They look the same. You only distinguish between the two by intention. How do you distinguish between dhuhr and asr? Intention. Good. That is the first one in the first group. The second one, the second point in the first group is distinguishing an ibadah from a custom, a adah that you do. Like the person who has a bath, why? He just wants to clean himself. You know, he wants to, uh, how, how should I put it? He wants to, uh, he wants to cool himself down. Outside it's hot, just cool his te- temperature down. Have a bath, clean himself. And the one that is doing it from a janaba, a ghusl, a person who's doing it out of a ghusl. What's the difference between, how do you distinguish between the two here? You distinguish it by attention. That first point, that first point, the people who speak about it are the fuqaha. That's what the fuqaha deal with. And this is, this is called, um, and it's that all the, that first part I mentioned is called, as, as a whole, is called niyatul amal. Niyatul amal. The intention of the action that you're doing. Amal niyatul manwi. Niyatul manwi. The thing 
you're doing, the action that you're doing. The second one is niyatul ma'muli lahu. The second type is called the intention. Who are you doing it for? Who are you doing it for? That's the second part. Finish the first part. And this is what is referred to as al-ikhlas. That is what's called al-ikhlas. That is called al-ikhlas. Then the Messenger sallallahu alayhi wa sallam has said, فَمَنْ كَانَتْ هِجْرَةٌ Anyone whose hijrah is إِلَى اللَّهِ to Allah وَرَسُولِهِ and his messenger فَهِجْرَةٌ Then verily his hijrah is إِلَى اللَّهِ وَرَسُولِهِ His hijrah is to Allah and his messenger. وَمَنْ كَانَتْ هِجْرَةٌ And anyone whose hijrah لِدُنْيَا it, it, it is a worldly gain يُصِيبُهَا In which he wants to gain أو امرأة or a woman in which he wants to get married to. فَهِجْرَةُهُ His hijrah is إِلَى مَا هَجَرَ إِلَيْهِ That which he has uh, migrated to. The word hijrah, or before I mention that, the messenger just gave us a principle. He said, إِنَّمَا الْأَعْمَالُ بِالنِّيَّاتِ وَإِنَّمَا لِكُلِّ مْرِئِ مَا نَوَامِ These are two sentences. Who the Prophet ﷺ, they are قَوَاعِدْ Principles. This qa'idah may not be understood by many people. So the Prophet gave an example. He gave a what? An example of that two principle. And he used the example as what? He used as example hijrah. What does the word hijrah mean? Hijrah means at tarq, is to leave of something. And aslul hijrah, the asal of a hijrah, the original meaning of the word hijrah, it is it is ayuhajar ma laha Allahu an. It is to migrate and is to leave off that which Allah has subhanahu wa taala has prohibited. That is the original meaning of the word hijrah. But it can take meanings as 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 what hijranu baladi shirk to migrate from the land of disbelief, wa intiqal minhu and to leave it. Ila darul darul Islam, you have to go to the land of Islam. As the early my the early muhajirun did before the conquest of Mecca, they left Mecca, which was darul kufrin, and they went to Medina, which was darul Islam. Who do they do hijrah to? Ila Allah to Allah. What does it mean to Allah? إلى دينه to the religion of Allah اتباعا by following it ونصرة وعملا giving it victory implementing the book of Allah they migrated to it wholeheartedly they called to it ورسوله and his messenger how did they migrate to the messenger if he was alive and he was amongst us it means that they migrate to him as an individual they left their land and they came to him whilst he was there to what? لنصرتي, to give him victory. وتوقيري, وتعلم منه, وتأسي بسنتي. To honor him. To learn from him. That is why they um, migrated to him. As for now that he is dead, it is to migrate to his sunnah. To that which he has taught. To follow it. And also to what? To migrate to the people who are on his path. The people who are upon that path. الطائفة المنصورة the saved sect فرقة الناجية طائفة المنصورة أهل السنة والجماعة وأتباع الحديث والأثر and the people who follow the hadith and the أثر to go to them wherever they are in the world and to stay with them to benefit from them is migrated to the to the Master Asim's religion فهجرته anyone who does that his hijrah is to Allah and his messenger. Now, this is the issue here right now. Which is the one, the word faman is a shart condition. Faman. And the fa here is the jawab shart, the answer of that condition. And it doesn't make sense when the condition and the, the, the shart and the jawab shart, the condition 
and the answer of the condition are both the same. It doesn't make sense. For instance, if I was to say, um, Faisal, if you come to this class, you come to this class. You see, the condition of the geometry is the same. That is isn't right. There has to be a difference. Correct? It should have been, Faisal, if you come to this class, I will give you this, 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 this. A sharp and draw a sharp are different. Correct? Here, what happened is, look. So the ulama, they said, okay, what is the condition? What's, what's the job of Shaftar? Because it hasn't been mentioned. Ibn Taqiq al-Aid, rahimahullah, he said, he said, rahimahullah, in his ahkam al-ahkam, he said, فَمَنْ كَانَتْ هِجْرَتُهُ إِلَى اللَّهِ وَرَسُولِهِ نِيَّةً وَقَصْفًا Anyone who migrates to Allah and His Messenger with the intention that's the condition, you see? With the intention. فَيْجْرَتُهُ إِلَى مَا فَيْجْرَتُهُ إِلَى اللَّهِ وَرَسُولِهِ And his migration is to Allah and His Messenger. أَجْرًا وَثَوَابًا in terms of reward. If he migrates for the sake of Allah and his messenger, then he gets the reward of that which he migrated for. So we add the word reward into the second sentence by saying, thawaban ajra wa thawaba. So the jawab shart and the jawab shart have something. Which is this one is saying intention. If you come with the intention, so the, so the condition here is a intention. And the answer for that condition is reward. So both sentences have been filled up. Um, what does the word dunya mean linguistically? Where does it come from? The word dunya, بالضم الدال, du. But they put a dhamma on the dal. Waqila, and it's also said in the language you can use a kasra and say dinya. And it's on the sigatu fu'la, dunya. What does it mean? It means dunu. Dunu means something that's close. Dunu means al-qurb, something that is close. Why was it called close? Because it preceded and it came before the akhirah. It's closer, it's before the akhirah. Yusibuha means what? To gain. Imra'ah, a woman. The scholars said the reason why the Prophet ﷺ mentioned the woman, uh, the scholars, they said, the reason why the Prophet ﷺ mentioned the woman after he mentioned the dunya, and the woman is a part of the dunya. The scholars, they gave three answers. Are you with me? Three answers. And only one of those answers are strong. First view, they, first scholars, they said, first of all, the dunya here is not general. They said it's not general. And they said the reason why it's not general is because the word Faman came before it. And it, they said it's in a sentence, it's in a context of Ithbat, affirmation. Dunya, even though it's a nakira, which is a indefinite, it's in the context of an affirmation. If a indefinite is in the context of an affirmation or a statement, it doesn't show generalization. That's what they said. And they got refuted by said, it was said to them, no, it's in a seerah, it's in the context, not in a affirmation, rather in the, in, the, in, the, in the context of a condition. And if an indefinite comes in the context of a condition, it does show generalization. So your point is not, is not correct. The second group, they said, because the hadith is referring to Ummu Qais, Muhajir Ummu Qais, the man who migrated for the woman of Ummu Qais. And we spoke about that before. And we said that this hadith, as Ibn Hajar rahimahullah mentioned, ha, rahimahullah, as he mentioned, there is no relation. He said, Anna hadith al-a'mal siqa bisabbi dhalik wa lam ara fi shay'in min al-turqi ma yaktadi tasriyah. Ibn Hajar said, I have not come across any of the narration that points that this hadith came down on the muhajir of Ummu Qais. Even though he authenticated the chain and the hadith of the man that did migrate for Ummu, Ummu, uh, Ummu Qais, but he said that to connect this hadith to this, there's no clear point out of it. Ibn Hajar mentioned the third one, and this is the strongest. 
which is um, the reason why the woman was mentioned uh, out of the dunya is because Ibn Hajar said to warn about the women and that they are what? Their fitna is greater than just the dunya by itself. The reason is because the women by themselves control the dunya. In the sense where their fitna is the leading issue to the dunya. Meaning men only run after money because of a woman. Men only fight one another and bloodshed happen due to a woman or something that is. So the women is what? And the Prophet pointed that out. He والسلام, did that in many occasions. That he took the dunya out of the women. He said, Ittaqu dunya wa taqu nisa. Fear the dunya and fear the women. So you can see that they are parallel to the dunya. Why? The first fitna that happened to Bani Israel was women. That's where the problem came to them from. Also, the Messenger sallallahu alayhi wa he told us that the opposite, which is a person, the best thing he can gain in this world, in this world, is a righteous wife. The Prophet said, dunya mata'a. dunya mata'a. He said, this dunya is just a joy. Wa khayru mata'iha. And the best joy of it is al maratu salih a righteous wife. The best of it. So, um, a person migrates for a woman he wants to get married to. That is a wajwa. He wants to get married to. A young kihwa. He wants to get married to. Halal. Look how Allah belittled it. Uh, the Prophet belittled it. The first part of the hadith, look, look what he said. What did he say? Man hijratu ila Allahi wa rasuli. Fajratu ila Allahi wa rasuli. It was repeated, right? Anyone whose hijra was for Allah and his messenger say, his hijra was for Allah and his messenger's sake. It was repeated, Allah and his messenger, Allah and his messenger. Correct? But when he was a dunya, look. فَمَنْ كَانَتْ هِجْرَتُهُ لِدُنْيَا يُصِيبُهَا أَوِ مْرَأَةٍ يَمْكِحُهَا فَهِجْرَتُهُ إِلَى مَا هَجْرَيْنِ And the reason Ibn Rajab rahimahullah, he said, the reason was لِحَقَارَتِهَا It's not worth repeating again. It has no significance. For it to be repeated again. Now pay attention, brothers. brothers. If this is something that is lawful, getting married and the dunya this man hasn't done it for any haram. He traveled only to get married. Pay attention. He just didn't have an intention for it. He just did not come with an intention for it. And it was belittled like that. What about the person who travels for somebody who's haram? Who travels for a person haram to do zina, who cuts distance, then what is his situation like? What is he or she's situation uh, like? Fiqh al hadith. The fiqh of the hadith. We extract, inshallah, 11 fiqh from this hadith. The first one is, this hadith is a refutation on those people who have changed the khutbah and made the khutbah about politics and habasa. It's a refutation of them. How is it? Because this, um, khutb, this hadith was a hadith that the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam had done on the pulpit. On the pulpit. So the pulpit is used to teach the people, educate the people. Khutbah is used to educate the people and make sure that the people learn. Umar did the same thing. He did it on the pulpit as well. Umar, he narrated the hadith on the pulpit. And Imam al-Bukhari mentions, uh, shows that, that he did it on the pulpit. So it is upon every person who's doing khutbah. It is on him to teach the people that which will benefit them in this dunya and in the hereafter. And he educates them. Number two. And of course, when I say politics, I don't mean the Islamic politics, that is the Sharia. I mean the Baatid Prince politics that are happening around the world. Busy the people with it goes against the Sunnah of the Messenger, Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. Teach the people the Ahkam. Number two. لا يجوز, it is not permissible, an iqdam to go forward in an action قَبْلَ مَعْرِفَةُ حُكْمِ Without knowing it's ruling. Without knowing, knowing it's ruling. Because, look, every action it is negated if there's no intention. It is negated if there is no intention. And every single thing, action you do, you're not able to do it unless you know the ruling for it and that which it is. Number three. The heedless one, there is no, there is no um, reward for him in his action. The one who's heedless about something. 
Number four. A thiqa, if a reliable person is in a gathering and there is a large number of people in that gathering, then he goes, that reliable person goes, and he mentions what has taken place in that gathering. He mentions it. And the other great noble people who were in the gathering don't mention what he mentioned. This does not become a criticism on him for his truthfulness. <coughs> and it's not as some people try to use it as a defect. Why do I say that? Because this hadith, al qaba Ibn Abi al qabat al qabat Ibn Waqas al Layfi narrated this hadith whilst Umar was on the pulpit. And no one narrated this hadith from Umar, even though it was in a Friday khutbah. No one narrated except al qabat This is not a criticism to say, well, how is he the only person who narrated this? Where, where are the rest? Why haven't they narrated it? We will say, this individual, is he reliable or is he not? Is he known for truthfulness and upright? Yes. Has he met the conditions of adala and dhab? Yes. Has his hadith gone against anything from the sharia? No. Or any other narrations? No, it hasn't. So it's met the conditions of siha, correct. Yes, but this hadith is sahih. And it is a refutation of those who try to consider this hadith weak. Or who try to say that the khabar al-wahid, a singular narration is not taken. Five. And niyya to shartu fil amal. That the intention huh, is a condition in the act, for the action. Now, brothers, some of you may sit to yourself and wonder that this, the ba'in inna man a'malu bin niyat. I'm going to show you guys how the language can have an effect on just a fiqh ruling. This ba'a dispute came regarding what it is. Some of the scholars, they said that the ba' here is sababiyya. Are you with me? And some have said, no, it's musahaba. Musahaba means what? Company, companionship. If just a dispute of those two, each one saying, the ones that said it's sababiyya and the ones that said it's musahaba, do you not know and can you not see that the fiqh rule changed? The one that said it's sababiyya, sababiyya means reason or cause, they would have, they take the path that the intention is a shart, a condition, a prerequisite for the what? For everything. The ones that said that the bahia is musahaba, they would believe that it's a pillar and it comes with the action, not a prerequisite. It's inside the action. At the same time, it's in the action. You see how the difference occurs yeah. just by that dispute of the ba. But we take that the bahia is, um, it is a sababiyya. Number six, and niyatu min a'mal al the intention comes from the heart. فَمَحَلُّهَا الْقَلْبِ the, the place that it sits on is where? The intention comes from the heart. And to utter it is an innovation. It's an innovation. And the scholars are on a unanimous agreement that if a person utters in the salah, and before the salah, if he utters, and it brings tashwish, Meaning it caused a lot of headache and a problem to the people around you. The ulama are unanimous, ijma' that it's not permissible, it's haram. Because you're causing problems to the next people. Now, some would say, no, it's not to be that. I am trying to help my heart know the information. Meaning, I'm just trying to make sure that my heart gets the issue correct. I will say that is also not true. Because many of you don't even understand the Arabic language. And you don't even know what you're saying. Th the third point is, and this is the best answer, 
Because a lot of the people, if you say to them, it's an innovation, they'll say to you, oh, brother, you, you, you have, you have. That's what they say to you a lot of the times. The best point to say is, I'll ask you a question. If a person says it with his mouth, and he doesn't have it in his heart, will his salah exist? They will say to you, no, it won't exist. Okay, what about if he says it in his heart, and he forgets to say it with his mouth? Will his salah exist? They'll say to you, of course it will exist. So then it's pronunciation, there's no need for it. Does that make sense? If he says it with his mouth alone, and he doesn't say it with his heart, will the salah be correct? He'll say to you, no. He had to say it in his heart as well. Okay. What about if he said it in his heart? Are you with me? <coughs> but he didn't pronounce it with his tongue, and he prayed. Will that salah exist? He'll say to you, yeah, it will exist. So then what's the need of it? You're busy me with something that is not needed. And the Prophet ﷺ did not do it. Because the Prophet ﷺ said, um, تَحْلِيلُهَا التسليم. It becomes, you enter it with Allahu Akbar. The Prophet didn't say, no, he doesn't make that. The tahleel is the salam. The Allahu Akbar, sorry. And the tahreem is the salam alaykum. Anything other than that, you have to be evidence for it. Number eight. Number seven. Wujub al-i'tila bin ikhlas. The obligatoriness, uh, the man, uh, that is mandatory to give consideration to sincerity and to urge one another. And that. It is the condition of acceptance of your action, sincerity. Eight, stay away from showing off. Doing a matter for worldly reasons. Nine, the people differ in terms of their intentions. And everybody gains that which he intended. Ten, it is mandatory to do hijrah from the land of shirk. To Islam, to the land of Islam. And that is from the highest and the most greatest obedience of Allah and after al Qurubat. So to remain in the lands of the Kufr, to stay in Western countries that are Kufar, it is not befitting and permissible for a person unless there is a darura, a necessity for the person to stay in that land. For him to stay in that land. And even then, the necessity brought him to come. He is not allowed to intend in his heart huh? to stay there forever. 11. The, great, the greatness of the Prophet وسلم, in how he taught his companions and his eloquency وسلم, because he used قواعد and usul al-kulliyya he used comprehensive Principles and rules and foundations by saying, That took us to explain for how many hours? Allahu Akbar. That he said, said for three, maybe three hours it took us to explain. The Prophet just said it in two sentences. Something you can say in less than 10 seconds. And that is what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, Prophet said, جواب I have been given. Speech, which is words that are little in its construction, but powerful in its meanings. Mm. Finally, the scholars, a benefit, inshallah, which is an important benefit, scholars have disputed um, whether the wudu requires an intention. Does the wudu actually require an intention? You guys remember before we mentioned that everything that is requested from us are two. Either it's ma'murat or manhiyat, correct? And we said that ma'murat, the action to be accepted, intention has to be brought. Are you with me? But we said not every action that you have to come with, do you need an intention for it to be accepted? Such as giving, paying back debts. Are you with me? Paying back debts. Some of the scholars, they said, the wudu also falls under that. It's like paying back debts. You don't need an intention for it. Even that is something you're coming with, but they said it's not from those things you need to come with an intention. Abu Hanifa said that and Imam Al-Awza'i said that. Because the reason they said our argument for that is because Because wudu by itself is not a standing ibadah by itself. It's a means to an ibadah. Wasila to the ibadah. Which is the salah. So the salah is what needs an intention. So your intention is for the salah, not for the wudu. You don't require it. The majority of the scholars disputed and, and debated, no, 
you do need an intention for it. And the scholars that refuted them in this in this is um, Al Imam Al Bukhari. Because Bukhari rahimahullah, he chapter in his Kitab Al Iman. Kitab Al Iman. He said, Babu ma jaa bab that which has come and al amal bil niyat wal hasab. That the actions are with the intention, and every single person will get that which he intended. And in that chapter, he mentioned the wudu, the salah, the zakat, the hajj, and the sawm and the hakam. So he brings the wudu in that, mm. under that chapter. In. So the strongest view, inshallah, bi al kareem, is that the wudu falls under that which you need an intention for. And that you have to have an intention of it. As the majority of the scholars have mentioned. And this hadith is at its general. To specify something, you need another evidence to take it out of its general. Well, in any case, the Hanafiya, they've actually contradicted themselves in this issue. The Han school of thought, the Hanafi school of thought, they've actually contradicted themselves in this issue. Because you know what they said? They said the wudu doesn't need a what? The wudu does not require intention. Good. But the tayammum does. The tayammum requires an intention. And what's the difference between the two? What is the difference? Uh, between the two. They are exactly the same. They are exactly the same.